shall come. Now you may think this refers to the final countdown to your GCSEs, which it is, but no, this refers to the official Chinese errors chart. So these are looking at the most errors that people make all the time in your control assessments, but which also you need to be looking out for in your reading and listening exams. So in at number 10, we have using Liang instead of R. So let's have a look and see how this error is in practice. We see a lot of sentences which could say This would be incorrect because we're using the wrong to with a measure word. What should it be? We should be using liang because we have a measure word and we're using a number but whenever we're saying to as a measure word we use liang. So always remember one of our mistakes use to with a measure word use liang and not r. So, in at number nine, we have measure words. So we've just seen a measure word there when we use it with liang. Looking at, remember when we're using a measure word. In this sentence, zhe yi ge go. This would be incorrect. Why? Because the wrong measure word with go. What should the right one be? It should be zhe. So whenever we use a measure word, we need to be using a measure word between a number and a noun. But we need to be using the correct measure word. So remember, there are lots of different measure words that we'll see. For example, the most common one is g. Next we have zhe. We use zhe with animals. Most animals. We have tiao. Tiao is used with long, thin objects. Tian with upper body garments. Ba with objects with a handle and Jang which is for flat objects. Hada. In at number eight we have Mei and Bu. So these are both negatives but there's a difference when we use them. In this sentence, well Bu Yo Tian. So this would be incorrect. Why? Because it's the wrong, we do not use bu with yo. What should we use? We should be using mei. So always remember, if we're saying you don't have anything, you would use mei yo. Also, remembering, in a negative sentence in the past, we use mei, but we don't use lu. So remembering, in our normal sentences, to negate a normal sentence, you would use bu, but we don't use it with yo. We use mei yo. In at number seven, we have de. So this is a structural particle. We use it in a lot of different ways, a lot of different sentences. It's quite often missed out and used incorrectly when we're looking at adjectives. So in this sentence here, we have ta shi yi ge song ming ren. Why is this incorrect? Well, it's incorrect because we have a two-character adjective. Whenever we have a two-character adjective, before the noun, we need to be putting in a de. So our correct sentence is Ta shi yi ge zong ming de ren Not Ta shi yi ge zong ming ren So remember we choose a de between two character adjectives and a noun Ta de In at number 6 we have word order with tang So word order is really important in Chinese grammar and there's lots of different rules that we need to learn when it's with time, there's a specific rule that we learn. For example, let's have a look at this sentence here. 我在家看书每天 This is incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because of 每天, our time phrase, every day, is in the wrong part of the sentence. Where should it go? Well, it should go at the beginning, after our subject. Here we have who, our subject, the person we're talking about. That is always going to be followed by our time phrase, when. What follows then is the location, where it takes place, and finally, our, what we're talking about, our verb and its object. Here we're talking about kan shu, our verb to read books. So always remembering, with word order, we follow a specific pattern. Who, when, where, and what, then our verb. Look at a sentence, it shows it correctly, and the sentence will be incorrect. How the? In at number five, 
we have word order again, this time looking at our time um, expressions. So just like we've seen with our um, associates and location. So looking at this sentence here, we have 我去天明远,每天坐地铁. So this is incorrect. Why? Because our manner. So that shouldn't have said time, that actually should say manner. So we're looking at how we use manner in a sentence. This is saying that they go by underground. This is in the wrong part of the sentence. Why? Let's see where it should go. It should go here. In the third part of our sentence, after your time location, but before the rest of the sentence. So let's have a look at how the sentence is built. At the beginning, we have our subject. Again, the person we're talking about. Then we have our time phrase, which we've just seen, which is when. Then we have the how, the manner, how you do something. Usually it's transport, how you get to a certain place. And then this is followed by our what, what we're talking about, our verb and our object. Chu to go and dian yuan to the cinema. So remembering the word order with manner, who becomes first, when, followed by how you get there. Remembering the different um, verbs to use with the different methods of transport. Zuo is the common one, you'll also have qi when you're using bikes. And then finally we have our what are we talking about, our verb and our object. Harder. In at number four, we have word order. Again, it's one of the big mistakes that lots of uh, students make when we're, when we're writing our controlled assessments. Here we have word order with duration of time. So this is different to our time phrases saying when something happens. Duration of time, we're talking about how long something lasts for. Let's have a look at our incorrect sentence. So, 我天天在公园踢足球 so this person is trying to say that he plays football every day in the park. He's got the beginning of this sentence correct because he's got a person, when it happens, whereabouts it happens, but then it's this sentence here, this part of the sentence which is correct, incorrect. The, the duration of time phrase is in the wrong part. So let's have a look where it should go. And here it is. It's in between the verb and the object of the verb. So let's have a look at how the sentence is created. Again, as we're getting used to, we have our person who we're talking about at the beginning, followed by when, when it takes place, followed by where, our location phrase, followed by our verb. So it's going into the part of the sentence which is talking about what, is to what they're talking about. Our verb comes first, followed by our duration of time, how long it takes, and then at the end, we have our object. As we know in Chinese, there are lots of phrases which, which is verb object. We've seen reading books, kan shu, and here we have ti zu qiu. We separate those out, the verb comes first, how long it takes in between, and then our object at the end. So this is really important, and this will often come up when you're talking about activities and hobbies, which is a very popular topic at GCSE. Listening out as well in your listening because they will often talk about how long something happens. Okay? In at number three, we have the all important love particle. It is a very important particle which denotes past tense. In Chinese, they don't have tenses, so we need to remember le is used with a completed action. Let's have a look at how it's used correctly and incorrectly. So in this sentence we have 我昨天去伦敦 So he's talking about, he's got his time phrase correctly, he's talking about yesterday, so we know it happened in the past. And he went to London. He set off and he got there. That is a completed action. So he's missing the all-important le particle, which, remember, goes immediately after the verb. So here is our verb for to go, immediately after the verb before the object. So, don't forget, when you're talking about an action which is finished, it had a clear start, it had a clear end, it happened in the past. We use a time phrase to show when it happened, last year, chunian, yesterday, tian, and we remember to put the le after the verb. Remember that le is only used after verbs which have a clear beginning and an end. We'll also remember the other particle which we use in the past tense, which is wo, which denotes an experience. You've had that experience in the past. Pardon? 
then at number two, we have her. As Chi teachers of Chinese, we see this mistake all the time. It is really important. Let's have a look to see how it's used incorrectly. So in this sentence, 她是一个很美丽和很聪明的人. So they're trying to say that this person, she is a very beautiful and a very intelligent person. But what have they done incorrectly? Well, they've used a her to link two adjectives. This is incorrect. Let's see how this should be written properly. So we can use this special comma. This is used before um, lists to show things that are um, lots of different things about one topic that you're talking about. So here we're talking about the person is beautiful and she's intelligent. In English, we use and all the time. They hardly use it at all in Chinese. They only use it in a list of nouns. So instead, we can use a special comma, the slanting comma, or we can use this specific complex grammar structure, which again, if you use it in your control assessments, it will, this will get you to the AR level, A star level, sorry. So Tasha Yi Ge Yo Hen Mei Yo Hen Song Ming De Ren. You can use it in between your adjectives that come at the beginning before each adjective. So remember, don't use her to link adjectives or verb phrases. For example, if you were saying you were going to go and play football and then you were going to go to the cinema, we don't use it in those phrases. Use the slanting comma or use the yo and yo. If you're talking about two people or two things, you can also use yeah. Remember, this comes in the second part of the sentence and it will always come after the subject, after the person you're talking about. We treat it as an adverb. Let's have a look at how it's used in this sentence. 我很美丽. Ta ye hen me. So you're talking about two different people. I am beautiful, she is also beautiful. And in at number one, we have one of the most important verbs that we see in the Chinese language, shu. This means to be or is. It is often used incorrectly. Always we see it with adjectives. In English we say I am something, he is something else. For example, in the sentence, Ta So we see uh, she is beautiful again. We remember in Chinese we don't use it in this structure. We don't use a verb. This adjective acts as a verb. It's a, what we call a verb adjective. So we don't need to use shu. Instead, what was often used is a modifier, like an adverb. For example, one of the most common ones is hen, or if it's in a dating sentence, we would use Bu. So ta hen mei or ta bu mei. So remember, don't use shu with adjectives. It's a really easy mistake to make, but it's one of the most common. And remember, to get the highest marks, to get your A star, you need to be using a range of vocabulary. So don't always use the same adverb. Instead of hen, you could use fei chang, extremely, or you could use bi jiao, quite, or tang, to mean to. There it is, that's your rundown of the top 10 errors that are made in the Chinese language. Um,